time you saw me, and actually this room, I was crying and this room was empty. Well, look at us now. Ooh. If I'm honest, all that's changed really is I've put three rails in this room. Um, and you might be like, mm, still kind of empty, Robin. And you would be right, but money's tight, guys. I'm, a, I'm on a three rail budget right now. But basically, what I do have to t tell you, I mean, hang on. But basically, this is now my little studio shop room for my little vintage shop. So I started selling like mainly on like vintage, which is massive here in Spain. And um, also on like my Instagram, because obviously if you're not in the EU, you can't go on my vintage, which is fucking annoying, but I get it, customs. Anyway, so these are all my little like for sale pieces. I've been collecting and collecting and I thought it's about time to stop hoarding. So um, it was always a bit of a dream of mine to kind of have some kind of vintage shop of a variation. And this is the vision, let me give you the vision. So this is, this is what I'm picturing. I've got a backdrop for that one. It's a bit pricey, the fabric that, that I want right now, so I can't afford that, but I would just deem that as non-essential, it's just a big want. Um, hang on, let me put it up. So I am working, I'm working on that. But this is my little to shoot rail. And here are my pending rails. I've got some shoes underneath, some little bags. Here are some like trousers, because I don't want to hang them up. I don't necessarily like hanging trousers. And then what else I have to show you, can you see that? That's under boob sweat. It's absolutely roasted in Barcelona at the minute. Um, but what I'm going to do is show you a couple of pieces that I really love. Uh, that I'm in my shop right now and I'm proud of them. Look at this, handmade 1970s. I think it was a wedding dress, but it's got a little bit of a longer train at the back. Isn't she fun? So I've got her, she's gorgeous, we love her. This, absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal jumpsuit. Hang on, bear with us. She's fun, she's summery got tons of like little sets because if you remember from any of my hauls and my old very old content I was a fiend for a set now these are ones um that just simply no longer fit me in any regards and also don't really feel like me anymore because I don't know if you've noticed but I've been gone for absolutely ages and I have phoenixed I've risen from the ashes and I'm back baby just move you over here to my little seating area before I can kind of full pelt into shop because I'm nowhere near the financial security to do that right now because one thing about living by yourself, it's really, really draining on your bank account. Um, so I am, um, I'm not gonna lie to you, struggling, but I'm uh, pushing through, I'm soldiering on, I'm trying to be very positive that what, something's gonna come and something's gonna give and I'm gonna be a successful um, a business owner and internet sensation very soon. I mean, I feel like I've got my foot in the door of both of them. So I've just, I think with a little bit of a um, gaslighting on myself, I'll, I'll manage it. So yeah, I would like this room to kind of be a kind of showroom. I wanna have these pieces to be shoppable, but also I'm kind of working on a little bit of a, like a rental business. Cause a lot of the things I have and a lot of the pieces I have are bizarre. And there's also a lot of, vintage I have, which I don't quite want to let go of in a selling sense, but I think they need to see the light of day more, AKA you could rent them potentially. I'd like to do a bit more styling, maybe some styling bundles. I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to basically put plates on as many sticks as I can and get them all spinning. That's the goal. <sighs> That's that. That was item number one on the list. Item number two on the list is these chairs. They're great. Look at this. It's like a little, this is my little, this is my little doctor's waiting room. These are actually from my best friend's wedding. My best friend got ma married like last month, the end, well, the end of May. Uh, and I was, I was the officiate, sorry, they're a bit fly, aren't they? I was the officiate for the wedding. So I, ordained, I, I got ordained and I married them, um, which was absolutely hilarious. So what I thought I was going to, oh, and these were just like, so she, she did something fantastic, my, her, my best friend's, God, I'm so excited to speak to you. I can't get my words out fast enough. Anyway, let's go back to the beginning. They're best friends, Izzy and Martin. They are now husband and wife, thanks to moi. Well, yeah, they had pre they got married in England and then we did like, an, like a, we a wedding here 
in Spain and it was just the most glorious, fantastic, wonderful wedding ever. And Izzy is also in the vintage business. She has a vintage shop called Font Leroy, which you can find on Instagram if you're interested. She has loads of beautiful like Italian and French, um, kind of like more like late 80s, 90s, Y2K uh, pieces and they are so, as, in, as Iz and I both in the vintage thrifting business, um, everything she decided, or they decided, because it was Mark as well, they decided that everything in their wedding, they wanted to kind of be a source locally, whether it was thrifted, or kind of have some community element. So everyone involved in the wedding was like a friend, hence me ordaining, like a friend of ours um, has a vineyard, so she produced some incredible like personalised wine for them. Um, other friends did the music, our friend of ours that's a DJ did all the kind of evening music, another friend did the food, just did the flowers, literally everything. And there was not a, a napkin left unthrifted. Same goes with these chairs, so these were just like some extra seating because it was in a big monastery and we had lots of little spaces to work with. Um, so we had like a chill out zone and they thrifted these, um, this seating for like 40 euros and then they were getting rid of it after the wedding and I was like stop right there. I would like it and um, the fact that it was from the wedding makes them e even better for me and like I haven't just got it randomly it, it like, it's like keeping the dream alive do you know what I mean so what I thought I'd do after that little segue is actually show you what I wore for the wedding um, because it was great if you ask me I had an outfit change of course I did now you have to bear with me because um, it's too hot to go full pelt but I'll show you so you get the idea. So I have this incredible, incredible dress that I thrifted for about eight euros. And I've worn it a couple of times, but I feel like I'm a, I'm a champion of wearing things more than once. And I think it's special enough that it kind of um, withstands the test of wear. You know what I mean? This was what I wore. I had a big gold ch chain belt and I had some um, blue and black zebra, pl zebra print, like mule clog things. Um, I'm not putting them on because I'm honestly dripping. I'm honestly absolutely dripping in sweat. So you can imagine. I'll put a picture up. So I wore this for the ceremony. I um, it was originally like really long and like cape and like tapered out like that. And I did a little leg moment, a little bit of a cheeky leg moment. I wore this to marry them. It felt a little bit like um, feels a little bit like not vickery, but you know what I mean. Like um, with like the kind of sleeves like that. It's kind of kimono esque. That felt, this felt appropriate for the um, ceremony to us. It also, all the colours pulled from the bridesmaid dresses because we had like a yellow, a green, uh, an orange and a blue. Beautiful. I felt like I tied it together. And again, if I can do a nod to something, I will. So yeah, this is my ceremony dress. But wait till you see what I wore for the evening. You're gonna die. Now, what I wanted was a 180 from the day. It was quite girly, quite cute. So I wanted to flip that. And then when I was doing research, cause I, I was trying to go like a little bit like, um, clowny-esque sailor vibe, uniform vibe. Cause if you know me, you know that's what I love. Then I stumbled upon this idea. Basically, I decided I wanted a suit. But I didn't just want like a big boxy suit, I wanted a really fitted suit. So when I was in the depths of Pinterest, I came across who was a female flamenco dancer who quite famously wore like the traditional men's flamenco dress, the suit, which are stunning. And that's just what I did, baby. Got this for Vinted. 40 euros, it's this beautiful, Olive green, very light corduroy men's flamenco suit. Now it was big for me, so I did have to tailor it, but this is a little jacket. And then it came with the beautiful little waistcoat because this was my key piece, the fitted waistcoat, because it was too hot for the jacket. I did take it, but it was end of May in Spain. No thanks, for not wearing a jacket. So here was a little, um, waistcoat and then of course the trousers. I'm gonna put it on for you. You're not ready, I know you're not ready because I'm not ready. Every time I put it on, I shock myself. Now, first things first, I just need to show you the actual height of these trousers. 
Are you effing joking me? So I, I took these in. So they are snug as a bug in a rug. And these are my little baby boy braces. If you can, if I'll go down like that. Okay, I've added some baby boy braces because um, the waistcoat ended up going like over the top of the trousers. So I wanted something to make it more streamlined and less lumpy bumpy at the top and to keep them up. Do not ask me how I went to the toilet. It was hell. And then a little tweak that I did as well is at the bottom of a flamenco trouser, you have these huge cuffs and I added a little pearl trim because I also added the same pearl trim. It's not there right now because I've changed it back to the OG. I, where you can see the little lace tie up at the back there, I changed that out for a pearl trim. But I since wanted the pearl trim for something else, so I took it out and put the OG back on. Wait for the reveal. Look at that. I also took in this. So it couldn't be more fitted to me if it tried. I took it in just here. Um, I actually didn't cut anything out, any material out of it because I hate doing that. I hate altering something forever if I don't, if I don't need to. And then I just did some hand stitching just to kind of neaten all the, the seams and the edges up and stuff. But I think this is one of the most phenomenal suits to ever grace planet earth it's stunning and i wore some like little like a uh, mint green i like charles dickens shoes it was a vibe it was a vibe honestly and let me just put the jacket on so you get the full experience it's incredible and my favorite part about it is that i can wear this again and again and again and again if you ask me, that's the most ideal way to approach a wedding outfit. You don't want a one-time wear, you want a lifetime wear. So that's my wedding update. Now, what else have I got to tell you? Oh yeah. Basically, the reason why I gunned on with my shop room is because I pretty much lost all of my work. So, um, I took it like an absolute champ, if you ask for me. Ask me. So right now I'm in a real, real uh, tight spot, um, and I've decided to take a leap of, leap of faith in myself, um, and just thinking of what it was I wanted to do. It's kind of this. This is what I want to do. This and this, and I think they work together so well. I love making content about clothes. I love talking to you guys and it, it just felt right. So I'm here, I'm back and I'm ready to try and take this seriously. Um, and this was my leap, leap of faith um, in myself because I could go back to my teaching job, which I was doing when I was first start posting. I could find an office job um, which ultimately would make me very unhappy. And I just felt like, even though it's gonna be really hard for a few months, and I'm not quite sure if I can make my rent yet, um, I felt like it was now or never to do something for me. Uh, and this has become my kind of passion thing, I guess. So we're in it for the long haul, and my kind of new approach is gonna be uh, less thinking, more talking. Uh, and I'm actually gonna try and vlog and just let you spend the day with me as often as I can. I'm not gonna do a weekly post. What I would really like, I was kind of up last night thinking about it and I like just chatting and I like just like sharing things with you and talking about things I'm thinking about and what's happening in my life and what I'm up to and things like that. So a little short video, like every day or so seems to be what I'm going to do is at least in this like transitional period between my work just to see what I can build and what I can grow it's like a little test to myself so I uh, hope I see you back here again I'm kind of excited about that I've got loads more to tell you but I think I'm going to save it for tomorrow I went to America that's the spoiler I went to America for the first time in my entire life I was there for 10 days but I'm going to tell you that tomorrow but for now this is me And this is Stan signing off. Say bye. Say bye.
that'll do.